Now that we finished the brake and the inner corner, this video is about the outer corner. Why am I leaving this one for last? A little more work. So this one has a two by six that's sitting here. There's a piece of J channel on the other side. So a piece of cedar will go on that. These two boards will come out, a piece of cedar will go against this, and we'll have to butt a piece of cedar in here. This one, just like the last um, last video where we had to you know, cut the dados out for the J channel, we'll have to do that for this piece here also. So one, two, three, four different pieces of wood. And then the, the, the outside corner will be done. Let's get to it. Started. Before we get started on this corner, we need to take some measurements. There's two widths of board that we're dealing with. One is five and a half, and one used to be seven and a half. Now it's seven. Um, as time goes on, boards get narrower and narrower. So this would be a one by eight, which is really now seven inches by three quarter. And this one here is a one by six, which is now five and a half by three quarter. Apparently the dogs have found something to find. So this side here will take the five and a half. This one here will take the seven. So those two are solid. This is one's going to have to get ripped, and the one tucking in back here is going to have to get ripped. So I did some drawing. I don't know if you can see this or not. But this is the front board that goes right here. This board is going to butt into another board to hide this edge of the two by four in the back or the two by six. And there's the board that's going to go in the front. So that's going to be a seven. This is going to be a five and a half. Uh, this is three quarter, which just makes this three and three quarter. These two boards are 88 foot one and one eighth inch. Put a hyphen in there to make it a little clear. So eight foot one and one eighth inch. These two are eight and two and three quarter because of the measurement at the top. There's a little bit of a difference between these two. So this one has to go up to here, which is setting higher than this beam. Okay. So I did my measurements just like I normally do. Push, put this up here, measure down to, for me, I just use three feet. Um, I guess you could go down to four, you could go down to whatever you want, but I use three feet to measure back up, add them together, and then I get my measurement. So that's where all this came from. So with this in mind, we have to take off these two boards here, these two scab boards. Um, and then once these two boards are off I can get the exact measurement back here I think it's an inch and a half but this should not be as bad as I thought it was going to be um, let's go get some uh, pry bars and stuff and because these are all put up with nails and we'll pry this off of here and go get some wood and see what I can get this done before it rains because it looks like it's about to rain Something when you're using a crowbar like this, well it's actually called a pry bar, a lot of people put them in like this to try to force things out. Um, if you can get it in with the curve against the wood, you can push down and you get more lever pushing this thing down. I know that's like physics that you haven't heard from since you've been in high school, maybe, I don't know. But it's what it causes, it causes the lever and you can get more pressure and it's not as hard on your body and then when you get to here you can pull stuff out Alright, so the piece that's going here I thought was going to be the same height as this one on this side. Okay, this is where the big piece is going. But it's not because we're going to have to notch this out. So I got to figure out what that's going to be. So the piece is going to go up against this, this here. Okay, so this is, this is the front of the 2x6. And then this is the side of the 2x6. This is the edge, and then this is the front. So I'm going to have to cut a piece. That's about 
13 16 inch wide and come down about an inch and a half so I've got to cut that out of there 13 16 over then an inch and a half down and then bring that right up to the edge of this and then we'll be good Now that we're done, just kidding, the rain came in last night, uh, started drizzling, so I threw this up really quick. Uh, I knew that I knew where this one needed to go, and I knew where this one needed to go, uh, so just tacked it up here so that the wall wouldn't get wet, any wetter. Um, so we're going to pull this off today, pull this off, pull this off, and then I've got to get this little board here shimmed that's in between because there's a little bit of a gap. Uh, due to the 2x6 that was put in, had a curve to it. Did not realize that when we were putting this in, so I just got to get this shimmed up. So let's get busy on this one. Okay, as you can see, this has some play to it. Now, if I was just to put a screw, in, uh, drill through this and put a screw in here, it would just pull that completely over. And I don't want that. I want that to be right here where it needs to be, so I need to get this shimmed. In order to do this, I need to break down these shims some to get these in. I can't put them in like this. They have to go like this. So you're filling the entire area as they come together. They get wider. So I got to cut the. I got to figure out where it's going to be, which it looks like it's going to be right about here. So I need to cut this off and get this in, and then figure how tight this is going to be in the back. And then, then here comes the trouble. I got to take this off, and then push this up against here. To figure out where that needs to be drill a hole through everything and the reason you got to drill that hole is because if i don't drill it these will split and if they split they're just going to fall down and they're not actually going to stay tight so i'll drill a hole through this i'll put a screw through it and then that'll hold that in place and once that one's in place the rest of these should be easier to put in without having to put this back up so that's the idea we're going to I'm going to get busy on this and we will see what we get.
So what I did is I marked where I want these shims to go, and then when I did the mark on the edge here, I'm marking how deep I need the shims to be. Because once I pull this down, this pressure is going to be gone, and I won't know exactly where to put them. So if I put them in and I mark them, and I can look at each side where the lines are and where the lines are at the top and the bottom here, I know exactly where to put these shims. It's a really good tip. I think I should be able to get away with about three of them. And if that's the case, I'm a happy guy. Those look like they're going to be holding. We'll get the last one down here. Down here, right around here. See how that's going to work. Now the way I know this is going to work is the two holes that I put screws in, the, the two screws that were here, when I put this back up, they should find the holes. So if I put this in here like this, no problem for that one. No problem for that one. And we're good. Now I can cut these off, snap them, 
put this other board back up. Now when I cut these off, I tend to do it at an angle, like a 45. This way, I know I'm getting the, the edge that I need out the outside. The inside doesn't really matter. It doesn't need to be flat. But, so if it's inside, you know, if it's at, at an angle and that's deeper, that's just fine. But you just take an X-Acto knife or a utility knife. Um, they're sharp enough to do this. You don't really need to get a, a tool, you know, an electric tool to do this. There you go. And they're all out. Okay, now, this guy, this piece of wood here, we can get back in place. And those two, the little one back here and this one, they can stay there. We're done with them. Let's get these guys back in. That, again, we should be able to find a hole for these. There we are. There we are. We get the ones at the bottom. Lovely. Lovely. Yeah. Right now you can see on this side, this has got to get marked. So I need to draw a line all the way up this. All right, from the top to the bottom. Now this, this line I need to take into the shop and I need to get this line cut. So this will end up being flush with this when I put screws in. We're not gonna have this ledge here that, you know, just doesn't really look good. All right, so now we can take this board off. It's up here real nice. I just need to get these screw holes back in and then we can mark the rest of it <clears throat> for screws and be done. That one. There's that one. So now I've got everything marked. All I need to do now is get these holes drilled, put some screws in, and this will be done. Well, corner is done. I think it looks really good. Um, if you like it please comment below if you like the video please hit like and please subscribe to the channel uh, if you want some more videos like this and stay up to date hit alerts this will end the three video series for putting up and hiding how to hide J channel um, so I like it thanks a lot